If you uh, have ever seen the movie Super Size Me, which is a M Morgan Spurlock's film about uh, McDonald's and how it's unhealthy, um, that's clearly a 100% uh, fair use. Um, you may recognize the Ronald McDonald. That's a, a, a Ron English from last week uh, creation uh, that he drew for that. Um, but um, just think about it. McDonald's would never let him say Big Mac or film there or show the Golden Arches if they knew what his, his um, movie was going to be about. So he relied on fair use, you know, to critique McDonald's. And it's totally 100% fair use. You, you understand that McDonald's did not endorse this, um, that they're not supporting this film, and that it's commentary, etc. Um, if uh, here's uh, a film called Out Foxes was on the opening slide, and this is a movie where the filmmaker, uh, a documentary where the filmmaker did a bunch of interviews with uh, former Fox News employees, and then comp compiled, um, you know, out of thousands of hours of footage, uh, you know, uh, bits from Fox News that shows that it's not fair and balanced. How you know the corporation controls what it says, and how you know uh, ownership has a hand in what is considered news and what is not considered news. Obviously, Fox would never allow for that, so fair use is major there. So, you know, fair use is very important in a lot of different types of documentary films. Um, a, a case that happened, you know, um, involved, that's pretty interesting, involved um, uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Ali film. Um, uh, it was called uh, When We Were Kings. It's the untold story of the rumble in the jungle. This is a very famous uh, Muhammad Ali fight in, in, in Africa. Um, and uh, and this, this documentary was entirely on, on, that, on that fight. Uh, Turner Broadcasting put out a documentary called Muhammad Ali, The Whole Story. That used, um, I can't remember how much, but a little bit of that documentary because that was like the footage of of um of that fight which obviously if you're telling the comprehensive story of muhammad ali you have to have the rumble in the jungle in it um well turner got sued uh they claimed fair use and they actually they actually won on a fair use claim um because it did go to court because you know, they transformed the purpose. It was not a film about the rumble in the jungle. It was a film, a comprehensive documentary that focused on um, Muhammad Ali's career um, itself. Uh, you know, the original isn't really creative because it's you're just capturing footage of a fight. Um, you know, so you're not staging it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so that was likely fair. They used important parts. Um, they didn't use, uh, they used a small percentage, so that's kind of in the middle. And, you know, the market harm comes from could the, you know, the makers of When We Were Kings license that material and profit from that so that may be infringing on that market. But the documentary about Muhammad Ali, the whole story, um, you know, it doesn't replace When We Were Kings in the marketplace because that's exclusively on that one specific fight. No one would watch the Muhammad Ali, the whole story, in, in, in if they wanted to know just about the rumble in the jungle. Um, in general, in documentaries, um, trademarks can appear if they're incidentally captured and have nothing to do uh, with the story. Um, it will often be fair use, so as long as it's not consuming, uh, confusing People who are watching in terms of thinking like that, you know, McDonald's is associated with, um, you know, supersize me that, you know, you don't make those connections in any way. Um, you can totally, uh, you know, trademarks can appear, but you'll often have, you know, a lot of blurring or greeking. Uh, blurring is done in post-production. You know, you come and see that's a blur. Greeking is when you take um, black tape gaffer's tape and you put it over, you know, you peel off a bit and you put it over the top score logo or, um, you know, any, any logo on like the hat or, or what, whatever, or on a beer bottle or that's why like, um, you know, they'll have, uh, they'll put it over cans of beer or whatever because, you know, Budweiser doesn't want to be associated with a bunch of 24 year olds getting super wasted in a house and doing dumb shit. Um, 
it doesn't look good for their brand. You know, not all exposure is good exposure. Um, now again, you know, that's sort of up to the company. Um, you know, they'll often, um, they'll often like, you know, ask for things to be blurred or greeked just so they don't have to even deal with, deal with having to clear it or being sued um, in, in the aftermath. So many companies will just self-censor because they, um, they don't want to deal with it. So if you're a documentary filmmaker and you capture a trademark or copyrighted work and you think you may be fair use, you have to just obviously think, do you transform the purpose or do you exploit whatever you captured? Is it exploited? Um, you know, you could um, film a street musician playing music, okay? And it's like, you use it for a few seconds and it's a copyrighted Bob Dylan song, whatever. Um, that's not copyright infringement. However, if you capture that song and then you use it as like the background of an editing montage or something in the film and you exploit it, you'll have to clear the publishing from, from Bob Dylan. Um, so again, that's the difference is you can't exploit the work, right? Um, you can't find a Maya Hayek um, <clears throat> mural and film a bunch of interviews in front, it, in front of it about, you know, street art in New York, in New York City, um, because you're exploiting it. You, you know what I'm saying? However, if you um, were doing just a documentary about sports and you do an on the street interview with someone in front of one of her murals, that would be a, a fair use because you just see someone on the street, you want to ask them about you know, sports in, in New York City, and you do the interview. That would be considered an incidental capture, um, et cetera. Um, how much did you take? You know, obviously, and, and is it the heart? You want to avoid the heart, so that, that, that will often be looked at. Um, and, and massively, does it cause market harm? Does it replace the original in the marketplace? Um, and again, if you don't transform the purpose, you're likely going to infringe and harm its market. Um, lastly, you know, um, it's very important, well, it's very important that, you know, um, does your documentary have like a public service function? Does it serve the public? Is it educating the public? Is it informing them on something that it forces you to use someone's um, work? Because they could say no. You could make a film that's critical of a company um, and, you know, you're using its own media footage as part of that critique, um, and it serves the public interest, you know, you're going to lean towards a fair use. Say you make a, a commentary and you want to license that material from the company. Well, they may demand $100,000 and the cost is too high. Tip, that could be a fair use too. Sometimes uh, the use can be fair if the copyright owner makes the content too um, too expensive. Okay, um, can you not find the rights holder? Like, does you not know you find some you know film footage in an archive and you don't know who owns it? That could be a fair use, um, you know. But it really comes down to exploitation. Okay, um, you can use copyrighted works in documentary to um, use them as an object for commentary or criticism, quoting for making a point or illustrating uh, a specific point. Um, again, that would ultimately have to change the purpose, um, and you want to attribute in this in this instant. Again, incidental uses are just you incidentally capture copyrighted music or images, um, you know, but it has to come down to did you exploit them or not. And are you telling a historical sequence? So uh, the Muhammad Ali, the whole story is telling a uh, the story of Muhammad Ali in a historical uh, sequence. You know, uh, if you're watching The Last Dance, the Jordan documentary, they didn't clear all that stuff. They, they didn't clear all that content. It's just, it would be massively impossible. So some of that stuff they're using under, under fair use. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, it's a matter of, are you telling a historical sequence? Is it illustrative? Hard to license? Are you taking stuff from a lot of different sources that could ultimately change whether use is fair or not?